Sometimes the most obvious stories are staring at you right in the face, but you don't even realize it. The Harrier that's been around for what, two years and we've been talking about how great it is thanks to the Land Rover platform. But we never even thought of taking it on a drive with a proper Land Rover and tell you what exactly from the Land Rover has actually gone into the Harrier. So now, on our second installment of Tripping with Lemon Tree to the Orica in Odeipur, we've got these two cousins. They are cut from the same cloth, but does the Harrier really have Land Rover jeans? So I'm starting off with the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Now, I have to clarify that this is not a comparison test between the Land Rover Discovery Sport and the Tata Harrier. I'm not going to tell you that you know, for one third of the money, the Tata Harrier is good and great and all of that. The Land Rover Discovery Sport is here to give us a sense of perspective. To me, this is a benchmark for SUVs in the country. Okay, it is not as sharp as say a BMW X3 for instance, it is not as sporty, but for highway cruising, for mile munching on Indian highways, the Discovery Sport is fantastic. This really is the benchmark and sets the template for what SUVs are supposed to do. It's a true blue SUV, not a car converted into an SUV. This updated Discovery Sport, it also gets fresh styling, especially around the nose. And now it looks like a dead ringer for the full-size Discovery. I think the styling is very nicely done. It's very elegant. It's not too ostentatious. It's not too in your face, but you can't miss it for the world. And I think it also gives more of a sense of premiumness to the Discovery Sport, makes it feel a little bit more expensive. And especially the cabin trim also on this SE version does make it feel low and is more expensive than before. Now let's start with what we love about SUVs and why I'm so vocal about the fact that India is SUV country. SUVs suit road tripping in India unlike any other sedan that you can find. And it starts with the driving position. Now the Discovery Sport, you don't sit too high, you don't sit too low. The visibility is perfect, the sight lines are great. And the reason why it helps you for sitting a little bit higher up is that you have a better view of the road ahead and you can anticipate the mess that is going to happen in front of you. Now I'm not saying that that happens all the time, but invariably on a road trip there'll be some nonsense that's happening and here you can anticipate and you can react quicker, you can brake earlier. So people behind you also don't have to slam on the brakes in an emergency. It just makes you a safer and a better driver. It also calms things down around you. Another great thing about the driving position is that you feel like the king of the world. There's a nice armrest, you can rest your elbow out here, you can rest your right elbow on the door pad. It is really comfortable. You can do, you can sit out here for hours and hours until you just have to stop for fuel. It really is very relaxing. The seats are very, very comfortable. On this spec, the leather upholstery is really plush, feels very premium. The spec also has got everything that you would want. So infotainment, Apple CarPlay works. What I really like is this mirror. So even if you've got luggage loaded up to the roof, you can still see out of the back of the rear windscreen, which is cool. It gets digital clocks. Now I'm old school, I prefer analog dials, but Land Rover really does do very nice digital clocks, especially since the tachometer, it swings clockwise. Second reason why we love SUVs, that is the robust ride. Now on the highways, invariably you're going to get a speed breaker that you haven't seen in advance that has not been marked you'll get a pothole that jumps up at you without announcing itself and you're going to whack the suspension through it what you need is robust suspension that can really take a couple of whacks without feeling like things are going to fall apart and without your passengers screaming at you to slow down and drive safely and all of that you know what i mean right the Discovery Sport, it can really deal with bad roads very well. You don't have to slow down too much. And when you do hit that potholes, which you invariably will, there is no getting away from the fact that you will hit a pothole sometime or the other. The Discovery Sport, it takes it very well. The comfort, the right comfort is particularly good. It can deal with speed breakers really well. And the best part is your passengers, they feel safe, they feel secure and they can doze off and you can drive in peace. On this spec, there is a very good Meridian sound system. Everything works very well, everything is ergonomic. But otherwise, in terms of the off-road ability, it is very good. Of course, we are not here to talk about off-roading ability. We are here to set a benchmark for what an SUV is supposed to do. So third point about an SUV, that is space. With an SUV, you have a lot of space. With a Discovery Spot, you've got 
great seating for three at the back so five people are comfortable and you got a third row of seats so two kids can squeeze in back there so five adults two kids comfortable in the discovery spot i like the fact that it's got a huge sunroof but it's not a sunroof it is a moon roof so it does not fully open so you do that your kids can't stick their heads out of that and that really is a blessing because a lot of people they stick their kids out of sunroofs and it just defies logic the it boggles the mind to be honest it's such an unsafe thing so just having a glass roof is brilliant you let light and air into the cabin you make it seem a little more spacious but you don't do dumb things by opening the sunroof and sticking people out of it the other thing about this new discovery spot is the platform and that is what we really coming down to right that is the crux of the matter so this is the d8 platform but it has been updated to take in electrification obviously future cars are going to get more and more electrified and this platform can now take electrification what land rover uses is aluminum whereas tata motors their d8 platform is steel now that is a very big difference it's not just you change materials and go home right there is a lot of reengineering that has been done so that the d8 platform can be now built in steel and that really makes a big difference in the way these two drive how does the discovery spot drive very stable on the highway very planted you can do continuous constant speeds maintain a very high average speeds comfortably it really stays rock steady nothing shakes it nothing kicks it out of place it really drives very well in terms of handling like i said it's not as sharp as say an x3 so when you, you know chuck it into a corner it is a little bit lazy it is a little bit relaxed there is a little bit heave on to the right side on the outer suspension so it sits on the suspension there is noticeable body roll the steering it is not really very quick very direct but that really doesn't take away from the charm of driving the land rover in fact that is part of the charm of the land rover it's suviness and suv is not supposed to be like a sports car all darty and pointy and suv is supposed to go down a road in a calm and confident manner it's supposed to inspire confidence and it's supposed to feel regal while it does it it's supposed to give this whole sense of that nothing can stop me i can keep going no matter what and when there's a lot of traffic in front of you you can put all four wheels into the field use the terrain response mode and get out of the traffic jam the discovery spot now gets the ingenium diesel and i have to say that it is a very silent very refined powertrain at a steady highway cruise you cannot hear anything and the sound insulation also of the cabin is very very good you crank up the meridian stereo and you cannot hear anything on the outside it is made it to a 9 speed automatic gearbox and that is one speed too many ninth gear okay so when you stick it in ninth gear using the paddles 120 kilometers per hour equates to just under 2000 rpm so that ninth gear is very very tall and driving in india you rarely going to get into ninth and if you're using the paddles you are like shifting 1 2 3 4 gears and then you are in the right gear that you want to make a quick move so i find it best to just stick it into normal mode don't use the paddles and let the gearbox decide what gear is the best for you it is also not a very efficient engine i have to tell you that but overall in terms of its refinement power delivery also the performance of the engine very satisfactory so the discovery spot comfortable refined great driving position and solid robust underpinnings does it really now translate those genes into the tata harrier that's what we are here to find out So to answer the question that we've actually come out on a road trip for does the harrier have genes of the land rover now to answer that question let's throw in a bit of perspective now in this category the mid size suv category it is only the harrier that feels like a proper suv everything else they feel very refined and premium and all of that but they feel very car like the harrier it feels like an suv and in that sense yes it does feel like it has the same gene pool as the land rover is all about suvs and the harrier it feels like a proper suv now immediate similarities between the harrier and the discovery sport the ride is fantastic the highway stability is excellent and it can munch miles 
like a proper Land Rover. It doesn't get faced by any bumps, any bad roads, surface changes, nothing. The Harrier just goes and flattens everything and stays absolutely rock solid. The Harrier, it gives you that sense of confidence that nothing is really going to affect it. The suspension feels extremely robust, so you can give it two, three solid backs. Nothing goes wrong. Your passengers don't start howling, similar to the Land Rover, where passengers don't start howling when you hit bad roads. Year two, no problems. And in fact, if you see a bad road or a bad patch, you can actually speed up. You don't have to slow down. So in that sense, it is excellent. Also, credit to Tata Motors engineers because all their cars and SUVs have always felt extremely solid and extremely planted no matter what the road conditions are. So in that sense, it also carries over the Tata Motors DNA. While the platform has been borrowed from Land Rover, the Harrier does not use a Land Rover engine. This engine is the 2-litre engine from FCA and it now makes 168 bhp in this 2020 avatar which finally gives it the power to match the chassis capabilities and it is the chassis that is what makes the harrier what it is very good in terms of the stability on the highway good in terms of the handling as well there is body roll obviously this being an suv you will get body roll even on the discovery spot you do have a fair bit of body roll but this feels planted, it doesn't scare you. One thing that Tata Motors engineers should have learned from Land Rovers is how to sort of the steering. The steering on the Harrier is very light, very lifeless. It is difficult to place it with accuracy. And when you're driving it fast, which the chassis is capable of, the steering, it robs you a little bit of confidence. It needs to be more planted and it definitely needs more weight. Okay, it'll make it a little more difficult to drive in the city, but it'll make it so much nicer on the highway. And SUVs are meant for blasting down highways, which the Harrier, it really does very well. One big difference between the Discovery Sport and the Harrier that I noticed is that the Discovery Sport feels easier to drive in the city. They have identical dimensions, so it's not the size that really makes a difference. But I think it probably is down to the steering because the steering on the Harrier, it is difficult to place the car with precision, whereas the Discovery Sport is sorted. So the Discovery Sport actually shrinks itself around you, both on the highway as well as in the city. Whereas the Harrier on the highway, it feels fine, but in the city, it feels a bit big. It feels a bit cumbersome to drive in the city. Drives such as these gives you an opportunity to get into the nitty gritties, to get into those details that you might sometimes overlook. Stuff like the brake pedal, it feels a bit spongy, which we spoke about in the road test, but the gearbox, every time you get off the throttle, it goes into neutral. Obviously, that is for fuel efficiency, for coasting, but that does not give you engine braking, so that's why you have to stand on the brakes harder, and that robs the braking efficiency of the Harrier, the retardation capabilities. Of course, there is a solution for that, sport mode. So, sport mode now holds on to gears. It is basically for the gearbox. Also, the engine becomes a little more eager. So now when you get off the gas, it does not drop into neutral. So you do get a bit of engine braking. So that helps in the retardation. That said, this gearbox is actually very good. This six-speed automatic gearbox sourced from Hyundai. It works very well, well suited to the characteristics of this FCA two-liter diesel engine. I think it is well matched and it makes the Harrier effortless to drive. This is actually the second long drive that we are doing with the Harrier. Last month we drove it from Pune to Chennai and back and now Pune to Udaipur and back and it really does it very well, very effortless and it's not like after half an hour you're flashing your lights and wanting to jump back into the Land Rover because this also feels extremely good on the highways. Stuff that Tata Motors engineers could have done better is number one the infotainment you got the screen, but all the real estate is not used for the CarPlay display or the Android Auto display. And that ends up looking very small, so you really can't navigate it very well. You can't even see the directions, the map too well. So that should be sorted out and I guess they will have an update which can sort that out. The second is all this glossy black leaves a lot of fingerprints and that is actually something very similar to the Land Rover because the Land Rover also has all these glossy black bits and pieces all over and the fingerprint smudges that you leave behind on the Land Rover every morning you got to take a cloth and wipe everything clean if you've got OCD like I do. Other things that make the Harrier excellent on a long drive such as this, the speed buzzer, 80 and 120, you can hear it, but it doesn't fry your brain like the Discovery Spot. So excellent. 
Second are the headlights. Now these are not LED headlights. These are HIDs, but they work really well. And for Indian conditions, regular Xenons, by Xenons, whatever you call it, work far better than LEDs. Because in India, you don't have pitch darkness. There's always diffused light all over the place and LED lights just don't work. These lights make driving at night really, really good. Other similarities between the Discovery Spot and the Harrier, space. There is a lot of space in the second row, but there is no third row on the Harrier, though that is going to come very soon with the Gravitas. The Gravitas is the seven-seater version of the Harrier, the slightly longer Harrier, which has got a third row of seats. So that is coming soon. The one thing that the Harrier does not have from the Land Rover Gene Pool is 4x4, all-wheel drive. This is only front-wheel drive. Now, obviously, the floor pan can be modified to take all-wheel drive, but Tata Motors, right now, they're not investing into re-engineering the floor pan to take that rear differential because fact of the matter is that while we enthusiasts clamor for all-wheel drive abilities, actual people who put down the money to buy all-wheel drive cars are extremely small. Case in point, the Duster. The Duster with the all-wheel drive, I believe 6% of buyers actually, or not even 6% of buyers actually bought that all-wheel drive Duster. So it really doesn't make sense to invest so much into all-wheel drive when buyers don't really want all-wheel drive. So that said, as a hero car to position right at the top of the Harrier range, an all-wheel drive Harrier would be really nice. Another thing with all-wheel drive, probably this gearbox, you can't match it to the all-wheel drive uh, powertrain, so you probably need another gearbox. Same with the Hexa. The Hexa, the automatic, had only front-wheel drive. It didn't have all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive was only with the manual gearbox. The half digital cockpit of the Harrier, that also is nicely designed to be honest. So you got the analog speedo, you got the digital taco which swings clockwise so works very well, a big multi-information display so all of that really looks well. The only confusing bit is that it's got a gauge for the urea level which obviously the, all the PS6 cars now need to meet those emission norms and that gauge sort of gets confusing with the fuel gauge whereas the fuel gauge is the one right in the middle which is front and center but uh, at times you just don't notice it and especially the first time your eye does not go there it goes down to the urea level and then when you tank it up and you wonder why is the gauge not gone back to full now i must talk about the styling of the land rover and the tata when we left from pune both the cars were parked together at one of the chai stops and i posted a picture on my instagram and a lot of you guys commented that the harrier looks better than the discovery spot now, I don't agree with that verdict. I think both look good in their own right. The Discovery is more elegant. The Harrier is more in your face. But the point that I want to make is that Pradapos, the head of Tata Motors design team, he considers Jerry McGowan, the creative head for Land Rover, to be one of his design icons, one of the masters in the car design universe. And yet, one of Pratap Bose's designs, the Harrier, you guys like that better than Land Rover's Discovery Sport, which is commendable. The stuff that the Tata Motors design team have been doing off late, the Ultras, the updates to the Tiago, the Nexon facelift, the Harrier, of course, all of them look really, really striking. In fact, from the styling point of view, there is nothing to complain about. Earlier, you used to complain about Tata Motors cars having too small wheels and the wheel large caps being too ungainly. All of that is sorted out. All these new Tatas all look proportionate, all look striking, all are good looking. And really must tip your hat off to Pratap Bose and his styling team. I'm actually following the Discovery Sport right now. And one thing that really strikes me is both the Discovery Sport and the Harrier have fake exhaust tips. The Discovery Sport, the exhaust actually exit on the left, but it has got these two fake silver vents. And same with the Harrier. So when you drive the Harrier, do you really feel the Land Rover DNA? It is hard to say, to be honest, because both the cars, they don't drive identical. The Land Rover feels more premium, feels more sophisticated, and it ought to because it is considerably more premium and more expensive. But the Harrier, it feels like an SUV, and I think that comes from that Land Rover DNA. In fact, when you compare the specifications, the Discovery Sport and the Harrier have identical wheelbase. The Discovery Sport is slightly taller and I think 2mm longer, but that's about it. In terms of the dimensions, they're actually almost bang identical. With this 2020 update to the BS6 Harrier, a lot of the ergonomic glitches were sorted out. 
so the USB is now positioned properly. The wing mirrors are reprofiled, so those big blind spots are eliminated, but some things still remain. For instance, this handbrake style handbrake cleaver, it is really awkward to use. The center armrest, you can't really use it because it is too far back. And I wish those little things were sorted out because having this armrest properly positioned would actually make it so much nicer to drive on the highways, increase that comfort that the Hadio really does actually very well. Catch part 2 of this Tripping with Lemon Tree drive where we head out to the Orica in Udaipur with a bunch of road trippers. And watch out for the contest where we will be taking one of you on our next Tripping with Lemon Tree series. Hit the bell icon to stay notified for the video drop. Subscribe to the Evo India channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the thrill of driving.